Give me a full screen on this bad boy. This thing is a dime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, In the bucket. Window. If he can hit that throw. So we've got 11 scholarships available with spring, and we know uh, we know that Jed has said he wants four, maybe five transfer offensive linemen. So we think we know that two of these positions are potentially locked up, depending upon the health of guard Memelar. Also with, uh, with our center, Landon Hatchett, right tackle. I think we kind of all view it to be obvious with Drew as a party, so we don't need to go too much into that. But I would expect that at least three of your starters on the offensive line potentially are not on this team right now. So we've got 11, 10, 11 scholarships to account for. You've got four or five that are going to be on the offensive line. We see one, maybe two defensive tackles, one, maybe two def- uh, defensive ends edge. And then, you know, that to me, maybe another wide receiver, potentially, you know, another tight end, obviously, or two. Those are kind of the positions. You're not going to see some splash at a quarterback or, or, or running back. I think with Amos, with Krosky Merritt, I think with those two ships looking like they have sailed and less Amos, you know, somehow we, we pull him into the boat in the spring or something like that. I would expect this to be your running back room for the most part. And then it's really just going to be tight end edge, defensive tackle and offensive line. It, you know, maybe one more wide receiver and that's about it. Defensive backs, the linebackers were, were in good shape. Do you think we could see any attrition in the running back room though? Like with guys like yes. Sam Adam, maybe Will Nixon. Yeah. Nagata. Yeah. I mean like who do you think is the most likely to leave out of those guys if they did? So I don't know. I never feel super comfortable with speculating on guys to leave. And I, I think maybe we'll just gloss over that question. I, you know, it wouldn't be, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised. We're going to, th- I think Noah made this point not too long ago to me on the phone, which is we're probably going to see some more attrition. So I'm glad that you brought this up regardless, because there's going to be more spots that we have to fill. And, you know, running back is certainly a room that's got a lot of bodies in it where some of maybe the upperclassmen don't have a clear path to playing time. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see how that looks as we go forward. We also got to, you know, find out how healthy Cam Davis is and all that good stuff. So we'll, we'll, I won't speculate on on names or anything like that, but we're, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to see what ends up shaking out there. There's probably some more guys who will end up leaving in the spring, but rest assured, like we had talked about, plenty of budget to go and get guys. So that's real. I don't think I'm personally. There's no point in fretting about this until mid March once names start floating around and things like that. You've got the UCLA guys who entered the portal. Noah is there. We we heard rumors about Maliki Matavayao, the tight end from from UCLA. Is there anybody else that you've heard name tossed around? I know that was a question that we got a handful of times. Yeah, I mean, from UCLA is what you're asking. Yeah, correct. I know I'm kind of putting you yeah. on the spot. I haven't heard no, yeah, any. You're good. I mean, no, there's a, there's a couple guys. I mean, uh, the Garrett Orgio guy. He's a he's a he's a tackle. I think the other one was was a. Sp- Spencer Holstage, maybe, or the Benjamin Roy one. These are uh, offensive linemen. Those are go- offensive linemen, yeah. Everyone's talked about those guys. Um, another one is the Michael Studevant, uh, the wide receiver. These are, I mean, these are I'm names boxing. people. Are they actually, you know, hard names that people really want to uh, have transfer? I don't know about that, but I think they're definitely people that that uh, have been tossed around. So. We'll see. Uh, I got to look at more film, you know, with UCLA, kind of see if guys want to jump in the portal and kind of go from there. I mean, there's a lot of if you go to our lads and check the depth chart, I think the I think the big name really is is uh, is the Garrett uh, DiGiorgio guy. DiGiorgio. Yeah, DiGiorgio. That's him. Yeah, your Italian brother. He already jumped in the portal. No, I don't think so. I think these are names that people are. Husky Possibly. fans are like are likely looking toward because they're positions of need for UW. Exactly. So, yeah, that's my point. Yeah. So I think I know this was a this is who the players wanted in terms of the coach that they wanted to take over once Chip Kelly darted for Ohio State. 
It's that's an yeah. I mean, we could we could talk about that too. But that, that's Ohio State. Of course, they've got they're gonna they're gonna you know attract the top available talent. It's just crazy that Chip is you know stepping down from a head coaching role to an offensive coordinator role. Which to me, actually, I think that's smart for Chip Kelly. I don't know about your opinion on that, Noah, but to me, I'm makes sense to me because I think his future, if he wants to make it back to the league, is not as a head coach. I wonder if that whole situation of their quarterback, once DTR left, if them kind of placing a half bet on both guys. They had, they had, they had Garber, Ethan Garber, they Garber's, had Collins Lee. It was just weird how they didn't go full force or they weren't able to with Chip to go and get a top name out of the portal for quarterback and have Dante Moore be like, Hey, you're a one year and waiting guy. We're not going to ask you to start right away. That would have been the situation where maybe chip could have won nine games, 10 games and salvaged his head coaching job. But I think part of what played into his departure was that they kind of fumbled that quarterback last year, you know, losing to, you know, scoring seven points. I mean, I know I understand we had a different game than this, but Seven points against Arizona State, 10 points against Arizona, seven against Cal, man. I remember we'll watching this game from the parking lot heading into to the game at UW, and yep, this was like that. a barn burner, right? If you had won that game and then you beat Wazoo, who at this point was ranked highly, right, 13th, you know, and then you kind of take care of business against Oregon State, you go Stanford, Colorado, Zona. And at that time, Zona was getting slept on massively. But you would have headed into Zona 8-0 with three ranked opponent wins, top 15 wins. So that, that this season could have looked a whole lot different. Dante Moore throws for 165 against Oregon State, 234 against Utah, but you only score seven points. Like that was that the Utah game is a was before the Cal game. Yes. Night game. The Cal, yeah. Yeah. The Cal yep. night game. So like this season looks a whole lot different. Anyways, we don't have to go too much into chip. I just wanted to touch on that because it was, you know, it was an interesting it was an interesting move for him. But they also fell off the, 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 the they fell off the face of the planet towards the very end. I mean, look at that. Like three losses yeah. in the last four games. Yeah. Yeah, man. They could have been eight and oh with three ranked opponent wins right here. It's just bizarre. So Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the PAC 12 PAC 12 is going to PAC 12. Yeah. And if you don't have a strong quarterback, then this is what's going to happen to you in that conference. So, and that's of yesteryear. So it doesn't matter anymore, but let's talk a little bit again about some of these guys that we got coming in. I see the question here from uh, bread tastes like bread. I love that name. Is there any chance that Takario Davis comes to UW? We'll go into recruiting a little bit here at the towards the end but just as a quick answer to you i don't even know well maybe it's not a quick answer we, we can just touch on this now Noah, are you i haven't heard anything about takario davis in the last couple weeks so to me i'm not expecting yeah, the, it yeah I, I was told that takario davis would stay at arizona until got spring uh, spring practice and then kind of see and what then, happens from there yeah exactly and I think that's the same vibe that we got from the kid who's the tight end there from Kent. Um, his yeah, name Dorian Thomas. Yeah, so I think he's another one where it's gonna let's see where he shakes out in the scheme that they're gonna run. Um, but you know, I think the door is open here, pending we still have availability in room. I wanted I wanted to pull up some Will Rogers. Is there any other guys that you're wanting to see some tape hey, let's on? Let's pull some Jonah, Jonah Coleman. Jonah, you know, oh, and also, absolutely. if we have, and, and if we have any Vincent Holmes high school stuff from when he played receiver, I'm curious to see what that. There's looks like a ton. Well. What do you guys think about that move? It makes sense roster, construction wise, and he's such a talented athlete that yes, like he can easily play wide receiver, and he was very freaking good, arguably better at wide receiver. It's just corners a more coveted position, yada yada yada. But this is the this is the room right now. Like, where's the pathway? Yeah, it really is. for right here. This this pathway is very clear for him. I, I think within a year or two, he's he's on the field. It, you know, so I, that kid above the kid above him is uh, can be a special talent too. Man, yeah, I'm you. the wide uh, Audrey, Harris. Audrey, Audrey Harris man is going to be a uh, he's lightning in a bottle. This four right here. How tall is he? He's six feet. 
this four, this four right here is promising. <laughs> and obviously these two are too, especially Rashid, Denzel, but like Keith is great too. But these four, this four right here, fast forward two, three years from now, man, that's going to be absolutely Peace. dangerous. Let's get in some Jonah yeah. Coleman. I want to watch some highlights because I don't think there's a lot of people, maybe the ones that are watching the stream, they, you know, have watched him a little bit more because you're in the discord or what have you. And, we, you know, there's there's video getting thrown around. But, dude, this kid, this is your bell cow, in my opinion, him, him and Cam Davis. Cam Davis is extremely special, but the two of them. It's it's going to be a problem to deal with if we can put together an offensive line in the spring, which is obviously Jed Fish's yeah. top priority. So to me, I think I don't think people can fully put it together right now. Totally understandable. You know, you need offensive lines to mesh, but they've got five very, very winnable games to start the season. And I think by game six, the offensive line is going to be able to put it together and you're going to see a rushing attack that people aren't really expecting. Imagine seeing him and Davis on the field at the same time. Yeah, it's wow. going it's going to be special. And Coleman, yeah, really like the how many years does Coleman have left? Oh, at least two. Yeah. So you, you Maybe three. Think, the chart. He has two or three. Think about when you have a, a running back who can run or a quarterback who can run as well. It's going to be lightning in a bottle back there. So let's go to something else than hey. USC. Let's go to like some highlights yeah, Jonah, here. Jonah, Jonah Coleman has two more. Um, the biggest thing with Jonah Coleman, too, that I like is uh, that if you look at him last year with DJ Williams, you know, he, he split, he, he didn't completely split them, but DJ Williams was very uh, good at, uh, you know, taking some of his reps. Same with Michael Wiley. Uh, you'll see the same type of stuff looking at the, at the UW back, um, backfield as well. Mm. So that's one thing that kind of excites me is he can be your bell cow, but. He's a like he has enough punch uh, in 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 the runs he gets. That that Arizona bro, he averaged six point eight yards a carry. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah, six point eight. So it's like looking at that. I mean, yes, he can share a backfield, but when he's in, I mean, dude, he's a dude, he's a two touch first down all night, and it's like uh, he's dude, he's he is a tough running back, and I know Jed Fish. But he looks. He looked at Jonah Coleman as this is a this is one of the best running backs in the country. And he was last year. He truly yeah. was. He, I mean, he also had twenty five receptions out of the backfield too. So there's. A, I mean, he seems to be bringing a lot to the table, especially since we're going to need it. He reminds me yeah. of just the prototypical running back that in the NFL right now that's getting a lot of love. Those Austin Eckler types, Clyde Edwards Hilaire types. Really fast, built, strong, low to the ground, can catch the ball, not afraid to block. Ooh, I like that. So do you guys think it's it's Omen, Davis, and then maybe like Tybo or yep. something like that? Like that's your 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 top three? Yep. Bingo. And then maybe he Dixon moves. Comes in as a... Tell me he doesn't remind oh, you wow. of these little speedy built running okay, backs. That's a, that's, that's the 49. You don't, you don't got to go to the ESPN. That's it right there. You go back to that. Go back to that. That is, I don't know, just a right, right, probably like halfway through. That is a great run. Just so how yeah. hard he runs. I mean, like, we'll the, get there. guys are getting armed on it. I mean, like I said, yeah. tell me he doesn't remind you of that pro. Yeah, that run is sick, dude. Yeah. Right through the hole. The holes close up quick and he is gone. Yeah, that burst is big. Yeah. You see that tackle he sheds right there. This is what I'm talking about. Get off me, he says. Take a little leg blow and go. Yeah, that right there. I mean, dude, DBs have problems with him. I mean, let alone you got to catch up to him, but the burst is so – is. I mean, look oh, at this. Yeah. Dead stopped, boom, 0-60. to 60. Four he, yards, he's, he's gone. He's 5'9", for sure, bro. I kind of like five nine though when you're thick like that. Yeah, he's hard to bring back. This is what I'm saying. Like, so we talk about we've had the back and forth about you know like do you see him or do you see uh, Cam Davis being like the guy who gets the ball on first down and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, I think there's going to be some sort of split there just to keep those legs fresh for both guys. But 
I don't see. I mean, Jonah Coleman just brings you something in the running game that doesn't exist on the roster right now. We haven't well, seen like a super be, fast, speedy running back at UW like this in a, in a little bit. Well, we also got to see what does Cam Davis look like coming off the injury? Does he have the burst and the and the quickness that yeah. he ran and, and the strength? You know. So. Oh wow, uh, he's he's gonna be a stud, man. It's gonna be really fun watching him. Yeah, I agree. I'm very very glad we went out and got him. And this is this is another thing that Noah brought up too. That's a good point. Or I mean we've all kind of brought it up with, with um, Will Rogers coming from the leech offense of the one read pass or the two read pass, the offensive line that you don't have to buy him time. The scheme's going to look different. So you don't have to buy the amount of time that you were buying for Mike to throw something to the outsides or throw something deep. Like, I think if you have this type of running back plus cam Davis and you put it behind, even just like a middle of the road to, high end of the bottom third of the big 10 next year. And you have that type of offensive line. I think there's enough weapons on this team at wide receiver and running back to still field a very dangerous offense. That's going to catch people by surprise. We're, we're looking at that offense. You know, we lost Cuevas and now I'm very curious to see what, what, where do we see that being made up? Because in an offense like this, especially with a new quarterback, the tight end is a release valve. It's somebody, you know, it's a safety net. Do we see Quentin Moore being the guy that fills that in? Because behind them is a bunch of unproven guys. I know Noah has an opinion on this. Do you want? Do you want to share it? <laughs> I have my opinion, but I'm, I just want to talk to. <laughs> no, you. I mean my personal opinion on that is I don't I don't see Q Q Moore as like a as like a pass catching uh, tight end one. Ooh, I, might I think he's an absolute elite um, like tight end two. You know, getting into the flat. Uh, may, maybe you know, getting some you know some some dig some dig route type type plays, but I think you double go get somebody in the second portal window. I really do, and I but that's not a shot at, at uh, Key Moore. I just think that there's other players out there that can kind of stretch the field a little bit better than. Yeah. Well, and, and do you guys really think we could go into the season with the room that we have right now? No, I mean, but you can't do that, though. I mean, you only have three guys, and one's a true freshman. So it's, and, and one, and the other thing is uh, the young Otten. He, with his injury and the concerns, there's just no way you're going to go in and feel 100%. Just not ready to to put all your eggs in that basket. You got to kind of just got to kind of see if he can actually, you know, play a full season. Right. Yeah, like that's after, that's a... After all. That's a big thing right there. He's been he's been kind of hurt, banged up, probably more so than what because he's not a, he wasn't a starter last year, so more so than maybe what people know about. Um, so he needs to he needs to stay healthy and and prove that. But I think I'll push back a little bit because I think Qu- I think Quentin Moore can catch the ball and I think he can get open. But I Noah brought this point up a couple episodes ago and I I still think it's true. Like they use the tight end less. It's not as like key of a position. And if you can get if you can get guys that will help out that off, like I think the biggest task for our tight ends next year is going to be, can they block? And Q Moore can certainly block. So I don't mind getting him a lot of snaps next year, pending his health. And so, but again, to your point, if we can stretch the field, bring in like a Maliki Mataveo or, um, you know, somebody else, it doesn't have to be like a home run hit here, but obviously that would be helpful. But I think I think what, like we were going to talk about here with Will Rogers, this offense that he's been he he blew up in is not a four read pass, and then you need the tight end to be open. It's going to be stuff over the middle, mesh uh, stuff that gets guys open quick, and then but I, I think they're going to lean on the run quite a bit. So yeah, man, I'm Will just, Rogers threw for twelve hundred twelve thousand twelve thousand three hundred fifteen yards, ninety four touchdowns just 20 inter- interceptions at Mississippi State and it's like I, I sent you a couple uh, couple links in the uh, dog talk but it's like man look at, I mean, stats, look at that look, look at that top one though man I mean it's this is a dime give me a full screen on this bad boy this thing is a dime yeah oh yeah so, in the bucket window if he can hit that throw you can operate the offenses at, you, you can have a definitely a, a solid offense. 
He, how much time does he have right there? How much time does he need right here? Dude, I'll, I'll, I'll call it right here. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Two and a half seconds. Out. Ball's out. And yeah. this guy is 13 yards downfield, 15 yards downfield. Oh, shit. 20, 25. Yeah. Dude, that's a great ball. I mean, look, 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 and look at the second one, man. Uh, I love that he just extend, extends the play here, finds the guy in the end zone. Not the not not the most perfect pass, but watch how he extends this play. Dude, you don't need to be incredible. Just push, look at the feet. That would hey, work, baby. I like that. Keeps his eyes downfield. Right. How many how many guys they rush here? Three. Steps up, eyes downfield. Bingo. Oh, I mean that yeah, was almost picked. Like, also, it's not like you would. It's not like you would say he's a mobile quarterback, but he's not. He can move around in the pocket. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's you don't big. Have to be like running. exactly. Yeah. He's big enough to be yeah. dangerous inside the three too. If you want a little tush push action. Cool. A little tushy pushy. A little tushy pushy. But yeah, man, these these push, stats push, right push, here push. are racked up push. underneath Mike Leach. One two read boom. I mean, I look at those stats, though. I'm 34, 35 touchdowns. That's ridiculous. That's with Mississippi that's, State wide receivers. That is what Michael Penix was doing. That's against SEC defenses with Mississippi State wide receivers versus the guys that we got. So, and then and then last year he was playing in a different system and then got hurt. Yeah, I think he got hurt early on. So, is there games or seven games? Is there another couple guys that you guys want to take a look at? I just wanted to take a look at some of these starters for next year and kind of reignite. Like, let's envision this team with three, four more starters added to the offensive line and what that could look like. Because I think it's less dire than what you know, having had a month to kind of consume this and KDB leaving and guys leaving. I think it's looking a little bit brighter in my mind than, than it was oh, coach. hundred percent coach S asked, uh, how many scholarly tight ends do we got? We got three, uh, found a good comp for Jonah Coleman, Audric SMA. Yeah. From, from Notre Dame. Coleman is a bit oh, faster, God. but, but a, a bit faster, yeah. but same body type, same weight within a few pounds in height. If you if you're gonna sit here and tell me that he's Audric SMA, dude, sign me up, dude. Look at look at the stats. Look at the grades. Look at the defenses that they went up against. No, like, dude, I'm not yeah, disagreeing. Yeah. I'm saying, dude, Audric SMA is. I think he's hey, of so that you caliber. Say you, had some, you, you say you had some of the the Vincent Holmes wide receiver. Oh, that's right. The, yeah, let's. Yeah. You know. Vincent Holmes. So for those who are catching up here, let's go huddle um vincent holmes was switched from db to uh to wide receiver the reason why we're pulling him up is because we want to watch some wide receiver tape because he was just a freshman last year so we didn't get to see him vincent holmes the beginning of these will be him at receiver oh wow see ya Track star oh, uh, speed oh, was yeah. You're not catching him. Yeah. He's not even going full speed. Here's him at DB. Wink. Uh, ooh, that's your wide receiver. <laughs> <laughs> you can see why they had him as a safety early on, but you Mark can see cut. why he can easily translate to wide receiver. Let's see. Uh, Like obviously, you know that's not like a crazy route or something like that, but you can see it. His, his uh, Pink. his high school, his high school compadre was uh, Dylan Gresham, uh, the Oregon wide receiver. Oh right, nice little, uh, nice little tandem they had. He's the big thing on him, and Stein will tell you all about Vincent Holmes if you ask him. He loves Vincent Holmes and easily understandable, but he's like, <laughs> he's like a record setter rush uh, runner. And track, I can't. I'm oh, sure they I, have it listed. Was he like a hundred meter guy? Ten nine nine hundred as a junior, and I think it was even something more absurd than that uh, his senior year. Worked to like Olympic type speed. Yeah, man, that's crazy. It's ridiculous. Cool. So that's Vincent Holmes, fast, big, <laughs> strong kid, can break tackles. 
no problem. So that's what you get. Oh, here's the deep ball. Under thrown, ball skills there, keeps his feet, and you're certainly not catching him at that speed. One more. In the rain. Okay, sure handed. There's your Vincent Holmes. For biggest thing I, the biggest thing I like about Vincent Holmes is just ball skills, man. I think I think he like could really uh, he was very good at like body control and being able to go up and get go up and get balls just all around. Uh, I think you can see that at the next level too. Him, he always wanted to play wide receiver, and uh, you'd have really liked him as a uh, as a as a safety slash you know cornerback. Um, and I think when the new staff came in and he entered the portal. I'm assuming he probably went back to the to the, uh, the new staff and said, "Hey, I'd love to come back to UW, but if I come back to UW, I want to be a wide receiver." Right. And I think Kevin Cummings and Brendan Carroll were like, "Yeah, yeah, done. I think we can make. I think I think we can make that work." <laughs> yeah, it's we have more corners than wide receivers right now, more safeties than wide receivers right now. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. How often? Is one that thing. I, one thing I wanted to say as we we're looking at this roster, and I tweeted this out the other day, and I put it in the dog talk, Izzo, but. At one point in roll up, but at one point in the Jedfish era, you know, a week in, he our roster was at forty nine fifty people, uh, you know, fifty athletes, and having him just kind of stay to the ground, you know, recruit our roster. Dude, we ain't we're right at seventy four seventy five guys now. That's it, dude. That can't be your sold. And I think that it's something that a lot of people are maybe worried about that don't truly understand what our roster looks like. But being back at 74, 75, you know, scholarly athletes. And the reason why I say 74, 75 is because we think there might be a a defensive walk-on player who's going to get a scholarship soon. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep saying 74, 75. But Jed Fish and the staff, man, you got to give them a lot of, you know, a a lot of hand. Yeah, and it's applause, solid, man. Claps to keep to kind of keep these guys in the boat. Hey, you had forty. You had you had forty nine guys on scholarship, like what to or show up for the team meeting or whatever, and that that's yep. brutal. Oh. And now you only have now you have eleven spots to fill. That's fine. That's absolutely doable with the budget that we have in the spring. Yep. I wanted to bring this up because Coach S. I really want to bring Coach S. on here sometime soon. We're talking mm-hmm. about it, so. We'll make it happen, but he wanted to point this out. This is this is a Jed Fish type of draw up here in terms of what what Coach S has watched and sees from the type of scheme that he runs. So crossers, this looks like mesh. Coach S, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, full screen. I don't think I can go bigger than that, to be honest with you. So yeah, bring the tight end over to seal block. You got a quick out from the tight end, and then you've got two guys crossing over the middle. And they, it looks like they, this receiver breaks out back up to the top right, so they attack one side. But there's certainly things, and I think this is probably Coach S's point, is there's certainly things that you can do within with this personnel without like the top, top-tier offensive line. It's not like we're going to be completely inept on offense with the type of playmakers that we have. So, yeah, to, to Noah's point, I mean, great job in getting some key pieces back. I know... There was a there was a question about whether or not well somebody asked about Jordan Shaw tape we can bring him up for sure because I actually haven't watched enough Jordan Shaw so that's a great one what was I going to ask or what were, the well will freshman play I don't uh, Jed has said that he was is going to play freshman I don't see an obvious one outside of the offensive line potential a red shirt freshman unless Leroy Bryant probably has an opportunity to play a little yeah bit. that's a good one. In terms of starters, I think it'll be more you're going to see freshmen get mixed in. You don't think you could see any of those safeties, like maybe Peyton Waters or any of them guys possibly? No. I don't see Peyton Waters coming in and beating out Cam Fab or Tristan Dunn or somebody like that. Mikel Steen. Rasheed Williams is a, is a red shirt. He has, he'll have a chance to play. Yeah, that's a good yeah, good call. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a Justice um, Williams too, sending him deep. Or I guess Vincent Holmes might see the field too if you're looking at this this group too. Uh, scroll over to the left is a the, especially right if especially if somebody gets hurt, you're probably going to see some freshmen get. I got a sneaky one, Izzo. What's that? He's late. He won't be here till June. But the name on the defensive line, I don't sleep on. 
if he doesn't play as a true freshman, I would be shell shocked if he doesn't play as a red shirt. It's Omar Khan. Oh yeah, yeah, you know how I feel about that, dude. I know Omar Khan is an underrated East. I want to say in Texas this year, he was forty two and zero in wrestling. Or the last two seasons, he was forty two and zero. Preach! Hasn't I've been tossed. Heavy, heavyweight, heavyweight wrestler. If he comes in, if he didn't wrestle as a senior, he would have came in early. I think he start. I think he it doesn't start as a freshman. I think he's in the two deep rotation as a freshman, though. I, I'm not exaggerating. That he's wouldn't that good. It wouldn't be super shocking. This is what Noah is referencing here. Forty two and O. I'm telling you, right now, this kid by the time he is done at Washington will be one of the greats on the interior defensive line. And he, I think he would immediately be in the conversation. His like you're saying, his second or third year. Second year, or he'll probably see some rotational play this year. I would, I would assume they're going to have a hard time keeping him off the field at any school in the Big Ten. He will be like a top, top tier guy in the Big Ten later on. So I'm right there with you on that. That's a great call. Quietly, there's some depth what about, in that room. What about like uh, Devin Bryant? Uh, won't be. A, oh, I guess he would be a redshirt freshman. Yeah, I uh, shoot, we have him. Right in, like, probably starting. Or at least in the four-man rotation. Good amount mm-hmm. of playing time, in my opinion. You like, the same for Whitney? This is just my opinion. I think a lot of people would, would agree. I would assume that Bryant is ahead of Whitney right now. But yeah. it's not, you know, it's not April. So we'll get that figured out. But everything was, like, from last year's spring camp. Like, I don't know how we're going to keep this kid off the field. We said the same thing about Leroy Bryant, too, as at the corner, too. Like, like, he was a guy that we think could sneak onto the field. Maybe not start, but sneak on. Who's Dude, that? Leroy Bryant Leroy. came into – Leroy Bryant, man. He came into uh, – I, I said this on an earlier pod. He came into fall camp last year, and by the fifth, fifth practice, coaches were like, who in the hell is this kid? And I mean, there's a lot of, he's a little bit undersized, but I'm telling you, man, he is a, he's a prototypical lockdown type Island quarterback. Right. Yeah. I think this room is so, it's so hard to tell. I mean, so like whoever it is, they have to beat out or unseat these two. And, Mm -hmm. and so that's like, just not going to come, you know, they're obviously going to probably throw everybody out there and be able to see how it shakes out. I don't think new staff, what's going to happen is they're going to look at everybody. This one we know is for sure your lockdown left corner, one of your corners. So everybody's fighting for the other spot. Do I see Leroy Bryant winning that? I don't know yet, but it's worthy of us bringing him up and talking about him because he could, he could break the, you know, he could be that other guy because they're going to give him a fair shot. You know, and, and I'm looking at the secondary room and there's a lot of people in that room. I wonder if, that secondary is going to be susceptible to some attrition during. After, I think uh, I think that's totally possible. Yeah, I would I would say. I know I know some people I know some people like. Excuse me, I know some people like to kind of like throw a little bit of shade at uh, Elijah Jackson because some of like the blunders he had, especially like the Wazoo game, Apple Cup, etc. Dude, let me tell you what, man. The strides that he made mm-hmm. in going through last year. Asians Prysock and Elijah Jackson, dude. I'm, I'm telling you, man. Dude, those are your two starting corners, dude. That is six four, six three and a half, six four with Prysock, and six two, six three with Jackson. Both guys can get up and go. Both guys can lock down. You know, most. I mean, if not almost all wide receivers in the Big Ten. Dude, we might be just like, dude, we might be pretty damn good at the cornerback position. No, man, we seriously. are. Here's the question, too. Yeah, go ahead. Thad, Thad, Devon Banks, Jordan Shaw. I mean, dude. A lot of bodies, a lot of people that can play. Of this ahead, group, Sean. of this group, who has the most PT? You think about already? Yep. Probably Jackson. It's Jackson by a long shot. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to that's another thing, too. They got way more film on him and, you know, you know what you're getting like, you know, you're going to get a physical corner. So, you know, I think with him and Thad, there's just more tape than than the other guys. But, you know, obviously this this staff knows Jordan Shaw very well. And I think that's a perfect little segue if I don't mind doing so myself. I'll say that we also 
Go ahead, no. Go ahead, Mike. I was gonna say we, we had talked about it too. Like him taking those lumps is gonna prove valuable as we move forward. Mm-hmm. We've seen this lot of other corners when they're young taking their lumps and then after that becoming great corners. And I think with with Jackson, that's exactly what we have. So while we're pulling this up, if you're not already in the dubbed up Discord, get your butts in there. We're gonna we'll we'll make sure there's links in the uh, in the Twitch here. If you're not already joined, hop in there and make sure to hop into VIP. A little plug. Um, One thing about Jordan Shaw before we get there, I, I was wondering, and this is like a little segue for maybe the uh, the Coach S edition of uh, getting on the dubbed up podcast. But I would love to know when we look at this base base play in the fish offense, you know. There's a lot of you know, the, the the corner. I'm sorry, the quarterback. You know, does it does like an almost like an outside zone and then play actions back like a little boot. I want, what does Fish do? What does Brennan Carroll look like? Uh, you know, preset motion. You know, does he do a lot of motion? Because man, there's a lot of guys going in multi directions. I mean, he says yes. As, yeah, he okay. Yeah, I mean, dude, that is an act. For a defensive, you know, defensive player like myself, and then thinking about how to prepare for that, it's that is just absolute hell. Look, I mean, look, look at the tight end. The tight end on the right side, really quick. The tight end on the right side, he runs just a little out route right there. You see that on the right, but he comes in and then goes out, mm-hmm. and then you have. I mean, everything's just. That was that's, that's the play cool. design here too, because he does, the wide receiver at it's the top gross. does as well. And then the guy comes on the bottom end here, and, and we got two guys, you know, one at probably like three yards, another guy at like six, seven. Then you got these two guys cross a route, and then then a corner route. It's just flood, it flood like, that right it side. It looks like it makes the reads very Love easy. That. They're all in like the reads seem to all be kind of laid out for the quarterback, where he's not having to go back to the other side of the field or anything like that. He's looking five, ten, fifteen, twenty yards deep. You know what I'm saying? Or he's it's got four. Me. He's he's honestly has four layers right there. Look at that. Mm-hmm. That's, I yeah, mean, that's, and I assume this is play action as well, right here. Oh, absolutely. And you can't think. You, you tell me, Will Rogers, a fifth, six year type quarterback, played under Mike Leach. You're telling me he can't make these throws? He can. Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's for sure. Thing. Yeah. So this is what we're talking about. And with this being play action, your your running backs are going to set this up too. Sorry to cut you off. On no, Jordan you're good. I saw that. I saw that again. And I was just like, dude, that is an absolute like. No wonder that's like a base type play in the fish off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Coach well, S, we got to Coach S, we got to get you on the pod here soon, buddy. You, you did say they do a lot of pre snap shifting, correct? Yeah, yeah. That's what it sounds like from that's yeah. Because I mean, we, we saw what that did. What Michael Penix did last season with that, where he was able to get the matchups he wants, confuse the defenses. And literally play Madden against the against the defense, being able to keep shifting and, and have them expose what they're doing. If, uh, if Will Rogers, who's a fifth, six year guy, this should be money for him. Let's let's watch yeah, a little. A, I mean, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Let, let, let's watch. No, 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 let's watch some shot. I think, oh. dude, I, I I got a lot to say about uh, about pre pre shift motion, etc. But let's watch Shaw, and then we can come back to that in a later pod. Yeah, because we're gonna have a podcast that's we're we're gonna bring Coach S on, and we're gonna we're gonna make sure that uh, we get a nice little breakdown here. Okay, run after the catchers, no problem. I like his yeah, height. What's interesting to me about Shaw is that is a, that's what I was just about to say is the guy that's that rangy and that tall. I'm surprised that he ends up in Indiana, then transfers to Arizona. I mean, he can scoop, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like I want to see him return kicks. That's just, he looked like a man amongst boys there. Let's get more defense. Whoa, chuck it. Go ahead. All right. All right. There we go. If he's from California, he went all the way to Indiana to start. I don't know what that clip uh, was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's definitely got the long speed. His he's real long, long legs. Is he like six three? Or is he like six? Oh, no, he's only six foot. I thought he was way taller. He all. I mean, it looks like he plays way. He looks way bigger when he's playing. 
It looked like he was pretty raw at high, in, in the high school ranks. They obviously, I mean, they prioritize getting him over here. So obviously they see something in him from last year's practices and the time that he played. Let's see if we got any more defensive clips, though. Here we go. So uh, here's something kind of interesting. Let's see, Jimmy Lake offered him. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, he had offers from USC, Oregon, Arizona State. Jimmy Lake offered him in June of 21. He committed to Colorado. He committed to Colorado, committed to Indiana, enrolled. Was he one of the guys that left after Prime got there? He actually never, he never went to Colorado. Um, he enrolled and played at Indiana as a, as a freshman. Didn't, wow. you know, didn't play, but was there as a freshman. Transferred to Arizona. Never played at, never, you know, never put the jersey on at Arizona. And then transferred to Utah because he wanted to play for Jay Rich. So he was a freshman last year, though. Correct. Mm-hmm. He, has four, he okay. has four years to play. Okay. So... Coach S, he said he looked at 500 of these plays, the NFL from two years, when he was in the NFL fish from two years ago. These are keepers. Make, make it, makes it so the QB can get on a clean edge and hit the, uh, hit the flat or an over route. Yeah, I got you. It's, you know, he's flooding the right side of the field here. So it'll be interesting. And he said, uh, hey, let's Vogelbach said he left when Prime came. Hawkins left CU for Zona. Let's watch one more guy. Yeah, let's watch this. Let's watch Darius Afalava. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I dropped him in there. Go ahead, right below. I, dro- I dropped his huddle in there right below. Oh, got you. Yeah, and then he's going to visit us in June. He's a nice He's a nice People player, man. He him. looks, to me, more like a more like an interior offensive lineman, like a guard. But we'll see. This is him here, yeah. Big boy. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh. yeah, he does look. Uh, he looks like a guard. Huge anchor. Like Jeez. Lower. Oh yeah, I like his lower half for sure. A little raw, obviously. And he's in high school. Keeps the hands inside. He's, you know, he's certainly strong right. enough. <laughs> yeah. See ya. <laughs> God, you know, his body type kind of reminds me of, um, you remember Carpenter for the Hawks went to Alabama? James Carpenter, yep. He kind of has that same kind of body. Just kind of massive. We'll see if he, he, he wants to visit June 21st, I think. Comes Where's all the other offers he's got? Diet. Baylor, Zona, let's see here. He's got 18. I know one more point. I always bring this up because we were talking about Khan. Khan, when we offered him and got him to commit, he had like three or four offers. He has like 36 now. But yeah. Bro, is it, is it, didn't he have two? When we, when we basically had secured the commitment was prior mm-hmm. to Baylor and the other Texas schools coming in. And that was because he played at like a school that nobody ever heard of before, right? It's Texas, yeah. Yeah. Cool, yeah. So he had Baylor, BYU, LSU, Mich- Michigan, Michigan State, Nebraska, Oregon, Tennessee. I mean, that's nothing wow. to blink at. He 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 left for Zona with a Utah offer and a BYU offer. That's pretty impressive, man. Yeah, I like yeah, I like this kid. Good, great, great call on bringing him up, Vogelbach and Noah. He, he's a four star, correct? That, no, he's a he's a three. But I mean, I don't care. He's he's oh yeah, I guess he is he's a four a four star composite. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think uh, what we what we can do for the next episode, unless we can get Coach us on next week, I'd love to have you on, dude. Let, let's get you up here and talk some talk some ball and some scheme, kind of teach us teach us the ways. Uh, but another one, we can start looking at these twenty twenty fives a little bit more deep because because some of these guys are catching offers now, and you know it'll be really early on in the cycle. But we haven't looked at Dijon Lead Tape, who we know UW is a, is yeah. certainly in the top four. And if you're not familiar with him, get familiar with him because he's. Yeah. Arguably the best uh, defensive back prospect in the country next year, and so I want to pull up some some Dijon Lee tape. Six three and a half, dude. This kid, please like God, it. It fits right into that. I, I've seen him all over. Like it seems like Twitter, Husky yeah. Twitter is really in love with him right now. Yeah, it's it, part of that has to do with the fact that when he was at the UW Oregon game, the f- game number one against Oregon at home, 
it was looking real good. Like kid maybe wanted to pull the trigger good and we told him to hold off and man that was curious time curious times you just wonder about last year and what was going on and what conversations were happening about jobs and if kdb was leaving and yeah whatever so yeah gross but he's still uw is right up in the mix he's showing uw love all over the place so we i want to look at some of these guys so we have a real legit chance with that are going to end up being four or five star kids so we can see if this 2025 class is going to be a top 15 class um hey, hey, i got a question so. for you guys with with richardson do you think he comes with <laughs> no pun intended more juice than juice had uh he, when it I, comes to like like pristine and people looking at him as a, as a coach. I think it's like, he's probably slightly above juice was getting guys. Like we shouldn't, we shouldn't bat at bat an eye at who juice was able to bring in in his time here. But, um, I think rich has the chops in the coaching department a little bit more. So I think he can, he can get, I think he'll recruit better than juice, but juice, I'm not going to bat an eye at what juice was doing on the recruiting trail. He was doing pretty good. So, I'll just say that we'll get this wrapped up. You guys, thanks for hopping in here with us. We will come back next week again. It's either going to be coach S and us breaking down game film. If he's got the time looking at scheme or we'll be took it, taking a look at 2025 guys or both. So make sure to tune in to us next week. We'll tweet out when, uh, when we're going to do that, but I appreciate y'all. Mike, Noah, so much love. We leave, baby. What's up? Dog talk. Hit, hit, hit the dog talk chat. 27 second mark, baby. Let's go. Don't be messing with me. Oh my gosh, this is what we're saying. Come on. All right, that'll be it, y'all. I appreciate you. Go, dogs. Noah, love. Mike, love. We'll see you guys on the next one. See you on the flippy. Go, dogs. Go, dogs. Late.